For Ferguson's they would have carried a full support of blanket. And in the way in which they pack their, their knapsacks, it's in itself interesting as well. They would put anything that was hard and metallic on the front side, because the 44 in a nice round circle was a nice target for French, Frenchmen and various other enemy cavalry. This young man is going to tell you all about how an army marches on his backpack and not his stomach. Gather round, gather near. Yes, come on. This gentleman is going to tell you all about what a army, the soldier carries in his backpack, how he uses it, what he does with it, and if you've got anything illegal in there, you are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Pause to the camp. During the period that we represent, which is about 1806 to 1815, the, soldier, uh, the British soldier carried one of these, the army knapsack. Into two halves, they're called the envelope. Yes, carry. Not You either issued a blanket or a great great coat. We never issued both, so you were lucky to get the great coat because you can wear it. I got my blanket. I wasn't that lucky. I a magazine in there. Next, the soldier had various bits, bobs, and newsby fits which he carried about him on his. You know, for his regular days. One of these, of course, was his eating implements. Oh, okay. Bowls. Pardon? Bowls. 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 Get your, uh, not very good for soup though. No, not very good for soup. And then you have your prick, which, which are used to, yeah, to, one hold of the musket. to remove <laughs> any, any blockage, <laughs> which might be blocking the spot of powder from the pan going into the uh, barrel and setting up the main charge. Glamorous assistant. As you can imagine, during that period, as in the same as the modern army, they had to be well, well looked after, well groomed. Therefore, we carried the cut throat razor, basically. This is actually a hamburger. It comes from Hamburg in Germany. That's where your hamburgers come from. Apparently, huh? I do need to work on that one. <laughs> you also had to carry around the things that you'd use, such as your snot, your sharpening, and your uh, razor. As you can see, I'm so young and beautiful that I don't need to shave yet. Do I, Sergeant? Okay, carry on. Carry on. Cones for obvious reasons. Yeah, right. Rub it in. 
more useless things, apparently used for shaving, but I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> Tooth! Yes, Napoleonic soldiers usually brush their teeth. And as any of my audience, not including the old men in red, know what kind of soldiers would have used for toothpaste. Soldiers. No one ever says it first time, so thank you. Indeed, <laughs> they use salt. I still use it myself. So first hand experience, is, very, is it very good? It's salty. It's salty. <laughs> they would also mix it with soot to give it a bit of a finer abrasive. And they sometimes put some mint, and tarragon, or some form of herb in it to take away the salty flavour. Maybe that's what you're doing wrong, so you need to put some mint in with your. Uh, Why is nobody salt? standing near you, sir? <laughs> and of course, once you, you uh, washed your mouth around, you got rid of the blackness of the soot, and you can carry on. Today. Here's an interesting thing. When I was getting, when I stole this from a dead Frenchman, <laughs> after a very long hard fight, dead I wondered what it was. <laughs> what it was cheese. <laughs> but when I ate some of it, it made me mouth. <laughs> apparently, it's called soap. Soap. Not from the condoms, apparently. And you can shave it to your pocket and wash your clothes in it. Never catch up. Never catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's former, you know, former services, national service, will probably know what one of these is. Anyone? <laughs> yes, button sticks. Might not have been made out of brass, probably would have been made out of some kind of wood or laminate. But they use these to attempt to keep their buttons. When did you last use that? <laughs> 1812. I don't know. See me afterwards. I don't know, Sergeant. So doesn't know me numbers. <laughs> you know it enough when you get paid. Eighteen pounds a year, compared to your twenty-eight pounds, because he gets paid more than me. Or so he thinks. They also carried pipes. During the period, it was common to use smoking as a social activity. So you'd all sit around and you'd share a pouch of tobacco with each other. If my very good friend, the son offer to give me a fill of my pipe. I would give him this one because it's a bit naff looking and it's got a big bowl on the end. He would fill that for me and I'd get a nice big smoke. If my good friend the sergeant came up to me and said, Matt, could you fill, could you give me a fill of tobacco? I'd use this one because it looks nice, doesn't it? You know, it's nice and long, it's white. And it's really nice. They also won't get as much See me tobacco. I'd always give you one. <laughs> Another vital bit of equipment, considering we apparently can sew for ourselves, was the housewife. Which would oh, so that one, sorry. Yeah, this one, sorry. So this contained everything I'd need to keep this in presentable. Conditions. That's a bit presentable. Would you say it's presentable? That's not our side. Would you say it's presentable? Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> thank you, boys. Yeah, yeah. So this contained everything I would have needed. Scissors, all the way down, scissors, thread, all the way down to a couple of spare buttons. And needles. Clappers! No. These are spare soles. When you joined the army, you were given two pairs of boots. But because of the fact that they are straight lasted, which means that I can wear them on my left or right feet indiscriminately, I could get rid of get rid of one and work it on some form of um, cycle. So I'm a bit busy with this one. I haven't put the hobnails back in this one yet. So I don't know. You can see, you see the hobnails. I get through the mud. If you can see the hobnails through the mud, there's hobnails and stuff. I'm working on this one at the moment. And I'll take a soul and I'll attempt, this is attempt there, ladies and gentlemen, to cobble my shoe so that I can then work on one of these when they start to fall apart, which happens very often. Oh, I better hurry up. <laughs> right, now for the speedy version of the tour of the backpack. <laughs> We've got some very useful tools. Ta da! Very useful tools here. So I can see myself do all of that lovely sewing I do. 
<laughs> Whoa! I didn't want to do that. <laughs> no offence, sir. No, I <laughs> which is wax, beeswax, sorry, and soot mixed together to form a polish. Yeah, yeah let's not go into that. My shoes haven't seen polish in a very long time. As you can probably, you know, it's a bit, bit too muddy for that. Now, I can't get these open at the moment because they're rusted shut. Silly me. In this one, we have brick dust. Brick dust. Brick dust was the original auto sole slash auto clean slash any other brand of uh, metal polish that is available of its time. You'd mix it with a bit of olive oil, which I keep in here, and again, I can't get it up. And you'd use that to, you'd use that to clean your uh, buttons, breastplate, shako plate, and the metal parts of your musket, keeping them nice and shiny and rust free. Other brands are available. You'd also use what's in here, which might open. Won't open. But it's pipe clay. And you use your pipe clay to keep your leather, your leather straps on everything, really, up to standard. And as you see behind you, the soldier who went past in lovely shine, leather, leather cross, cross belts. That's what happens if you use your pipe clay, ladies and gentlemen, isn't it, Mr. 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 Stokes? Pipe clay, isn't it? It's definitely pipe clay, yeah. Definitely yes, pipe clay. Ground from my own pipe. Now this is an interesting one, if it works. So bear with me. Soldiers would have carried candles with them. But you can't light a candle unless you have some form of heat to begin with. So they carried what we call a tinderbox. 